set. This is Cool Keith once again. All right. Berlin, Germany. Yo, what's up? This is Cool Keith. What up, y'all? Dennis Death Martinez. Yeah, yeah, the man who's usually behind the mask. See the face today, Cutmaster Kurtz in the house. What do you think? How cool is Berlin? Uh, it's a calm, settled city. Um, they got a little hip hop scene that's growing really big. Um, they appreciate rap for what it is, and um, you know they're doing their homework and studies and getting better education on what hip hop is about. Excellent. Um, throughout your whole history of music, you really do seem to have a problem with like the industry, You're also a church where the industry is whack and all of that. Where does that deep rooted in a way, frustration come from? Well, it's not really, really frustration. It's just uh, general respect. I mean, a lot of people don't know what <laughs> the roots of rap came from in the struggle. Like, you got a lot of people living economically off of rap. You got stylists living off rap. You got bodyguards living off rap. You got um, networks living off rap. Everybody is living off rap. And when you come to general realization, you know, you gotta also honor people who did a lot for this art as well. You know what I'm saying? You look at Hurt, he's a person that everybody should always give the honor to in general because without him, a lot of people wouldn't have no jobs and this stuff wouldn't even be all around the world right now. Right. So, like, let's say if Cutbuster Kurt produces a beat, do you collaborate very strong with each other and you just do 100% like the way you feel how the sound should be or does anybody else has a has a saying into how that sound should be? Well, yeah, like as far as what you're talking about, how labels sometimes have a certain sound and all the artists on the label sound the same. I mean, I don't think, there's, there's nobody dictating to us necessarily when we do our projects. I think what happens is a lot of times we do conceptual or projects with a theme to them, like the Diesel Truckers had sort of a, you know, a theme to it, or Doctor Doom, Masters of Illusion was like a dark sounding, some sinister, you know, so thematic sounding record. Um, but you know, like our production techniques are, are different. Sometimes Keith is more leading on production and I'm helping him put, put together the sounds and then other times I'm just doing the whole thing, or other times it's more collaborative, where I've come up with the track and keep just adding things. Um, so it really just depends, project to project. Like Sextile, for instance, um, I think was collaborative in the sense where Keith was saying, hey, this is what I want. So I would come up with something and he might add a little sound here or there. Um, that's kind of how we work in the, in the production side of things. And Keith also does his full productions and other projects as well and works with other producers like Tom C and him did the project Polaroid album endless other producers as well. From St. Louis to the main don't fight the feeble shit the feeble split check your shit Are you familiar with the German rap scene nowadays? Have you ever heard any tracks? Well, I, I worked with Cool Savage a bit, so I know like some of the people from his Optic Records crew. Um, they were on, I think I had Kaput, Savas, and um, a couple other guys on the Redneck Olympics album, which they put out. The, the German version has like three songs that were created with German artists. Let's see, I met Dandy Man from Hamburg. I met a few people just hanging out in Germany, being out here in the scene. And I think, I think there's definitely a, a group of people out here doing like original, uh, maybe different sounding stuff. There's people doing like gangster hard stuff. Uh, I guess there's even some guys who rap in English. I think that the German language stuff has picked up a lot more in the last, what, five or six years maybe. Uh, so that's good, I think people should embrace their own culture and their own style and bring it into whatever they're going to do. Um, and I think that it's okay to imitate or be influenced in some ways, but when you 
really want to develop your own style, you know, you gotta pick your own language and talk about you know, your, own, your own culture and stuff like that. Dr. Octagon, proctologist, lyrical scientist, when I know my twist, when I release the hits, there's no one on the imitation guest list, organic kilometer, you feel the temperature, but you move the advisor, I take the advice, opposite Mr. Nice, Bone you twice, we hear it, the funkology, astrology, looking up the space window with the brains, I wear the cold but there's also now for, for like two, two heads, like there's a really sad image now taking place. For example, a show like an MTV where people, you know, they, they really want to keep their golden star rock image alive through any pr price. You know, they sell themselves really heavy, heavy stage hours and like, you know, what Flavor Flav nowadays is doing, you know. And that is like just keeping it, keeping this fame already sort of faded fame attitude for any price. Well, it's funny, yeah. you know, it seems like we always got a problem with rap. I mean, you look at rock, those guys wear the same t-shirts for 20 years and nothing is wrong, wrong with rock. Every time you look at a rock band, they got like, um, it's, I mean, every rock group come out is the same. It's but true. people are quick, quick to criticize an artist, well, I didn't like his album, I didn't like his second album. Every year a rock group come out with the same black t-shirt with, with guitars. And they're incredible. Right. But the thing is like, now for example, this, just to come again on that Flavor Flav tip, now he's doing a show which just completely is, just lives on, a, on an image which, you know, the, where this whole, it doesn't anything have to do anymore with where he came from. And now, like, look where he's going into that weird show. And it just seems that he's just trying to make money of, of a thing which just... Well, yeah. Flavor was no Flavor didn't rap in general. He was always an entertainer from the get go, even with Public Enemy. I mean, I think he was just more of the the enlightenment part of Chuck D. I mean, Chuck D told a serious story, and Flavor was the humorous part about it. Otherwise, people would have took it too serious with the things they was coming at people with. Some last words for Berlin. Um, Berlin up the support no downloading what up Berlin check for us everywhere we're at we're always on the internet always support us Dennis Death Latin Froze Latinos Africanos always alongside Cool Keith always alongside Cutmaster Kurt more to come don't don't you know keep it rolling yeah what's up Berlin just want to say thank you for all your support. You guys are a great city in Europe. You guys always support big time. And uh, we will be back. We got the new Dr. Doom album coming out later. Cool Keith has his other projects. And uh, Motion Man's new album, Pabludo's Way, has been out. You got the Sex Style Unreleased project coming out, limited edition. You got the Simeon Samurais, a man Tom C3, and Prince Poe from Organized Confusion. So there's all kinds of stuff coming up. Speaking of Motion Man, so look who we got in the house. Last but not least, Motion Man wants to say what's up. What's going on, y'all? You feeling out there? I just woke up, as you can see. Feeling good, though. Berlin. Berlin.